What's going on, Xanderverse? It's your boy Xander Wynn here, the Jetlock Nerd. Welcome back to TXI. As the title suggests, I am here to do my I'm here to finally do my review on M9 Shaman Split. Um, I just finished watching it just now, and I have to tell you, I really enjoyed this movie. Um let me just first and foremost say, well, M Night Shyamalan, welcome back to movies. I know you had a couple of stinkers for the past couple of movies you came up with, but um, I have not seen the visit, but I heard that was pretty good. This is definitely back to original form from when M Night Shyamalan first came out. This is going to be very long. It will be kind of spoilerish, but at this point, a lot of you have probably already seen the movie already. So what I'm going to say is not going to be news to you at all. So, and if you haven't seen this movie. Please go and go see it. Do yourself a favor. I, I, whatever you think about M. Night Shyamalan at the moment right now, put that to the side and just go see this movie. Trust me, if you liked his earlier things, I think you'll definitely like this one. In fact, I think you'll love this one. I actually really, really enjoyed watching this movie. Um, Again, this is going to be spoiler-ish. So, you know, if you haven't seen it and you don't really want to know what happens, definitely click out of this video now. Go see it and then come back and enjoy it. But if not, and, you've, and I'm like most of you have probably already seen this, let's just get right into it. First and foremost, let me get the most obvious and well-known spoiler out the way. Split is a sidequel. Not a sequel. It is a sidequel to Unbreakable. M. Night Shyamalan's second, and in my humble opinion, one of his most underrated movies that he's ever come out with. Um, I saw Unbreakable when it came out in movie theaters. Me and my cousin went to go see it, and I have to tell you, I liked The Sixth Sense, but I loved Unbreakable. I still do. And to me, it is still a movie that still holds up to this day. It was, this. remember, this movie, Unbreakable, came out before, came out of time before the big superhero movie, Boom, came about. So this is what, I, this, uh, Unbreakable was like an obscure comic book movie so um the, like i said uh split is not a direct sequel to it it is a cycle and for those of you who don't know the definition of a cycle is a story that takes place relatively in the same universe but doesn't really necessarily have to do with the main character even though bruce willis's character of david dunn does, sh does show up at the end of this movie um that is most that is more than likely from what I'm from what I'm hearing is the predecessor for what's going to be Unbreakable 2 that's being worked on right now. And it's an interesting tape considering the fact that M. Night Shyamalan is usually used to doing one shot movies, which, in my honest opinion, a lot of people don't. I mean, people still do it, but there's there's a lot more people focused on creating a universe, creating a franchise than just standalone movies. <laughs> Now, most people think this is his attempt to try to create some kind of solid universe, which is okay. That's fine. But, you know, hopefully he doesn't, you know, miss any sense or take it too, too far that it becomes a parody of itself. So, yeah. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, that Split is essentially a sequel to Unbreakable. Let's get right into the main movie. I enjoyed... I really enjoyed James McAvoy's uh, range with all the different personalities that he had to play. He basically plays a character by the name of Kevin Crumb, who who inhabits 23 different personalities within his mind. You have the nine-year-old Hedwig. You have Dennis. You have Barry, who seems to be a fashion designer. You have Patricia. Um, from what I remember, there's a couple other characters. There's a character by the name of Jade. Who is a diabetic? There is a um. I'm trying to look back because he he has a computer, and on his computer he has recordings of all the different personalities that exist within him. Um, there is a doctor. I'm forgetting her name right now. That he does go see. Um, I I will have to admit. At times she seemed pretty smart, but at times it was just like, what is what is, what is even your purpose if you're just going to denounce everything that you believe and that you talked about in the beginning of the movie? And. The character of Kevin, he basically um, abducts three young, three high school girls, and he's planning on using them as a sacrifice to the 24th personality coming forth, which is known as the Beast. Um, two of the um, characters, I'm, not, I'm forgetting their names off the top of my head right now, 
but two, three, all he lumps them in as three characters who pr are pretty much impure, and in his mind, those who are impure are people who never had to struggle, people who never had to really deal with any major issue, like he has. Um, the lead, the lead, um, the lead girl who's been trying to make sense of all this stuff, she ends up being the one that kind of, well, for one, she ends up the one that survives. And she ends up the one that really tries to communicate more with um, Kevin and his personalities other than the other two. It was a very interesting dynamic, especially given her flashbacks, being that she's come from a abusive... He, uh, she has a, a really... A, 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 that's basically all it is. An abusive relationship with her uncle, who's become who became her primary caregiver after her father passed away. And there's been a history of molestation and things like that, most likely which has gone on until she's become a teenager. Because in the beginning of the movie, it is stated that, you know, she tends to keep to herself. She likes to t get a detention a lot. And later on, she explains that she does things on purpose so she can get detention. So which means that's probably her way of not having to go home right away. Um, those characters were all pretty um, solid. The other two, you know, they were kind of there. But to see her dynamic to go from someone who's trying to make sense of all this to someone who's just trying to survive this whole ordeal was a pretty interesting. But I have to give James McAvoy his due because his ability to just play these different roles and just completely embody them is, is only something certain method actors tend to do. And I think James McAvoy is definitely on the road to being a good method actor. Um, I, I Out of all the characters, out of all the personalities I think I enjoyed, I think I enjoyed... Um, I think I enjoyed Barry's the most. Hedwig was okay. Hedwig, I mean, Hedwig was Hedwig was a nine-year-old kid. I, I kind of liked his. But I think I enjoyed Barry's the most. Barry was pretty much, he's like the, um, well, supposed to be the face man, if you will. He's supposed to be the face man out in public, especially when, he's, when he goes to go see the psychiatrist. But, you know, she catches on to him and gets, and gets the inkling that Barry's not really Barry when she's, when he's talking to her. He's really somebody else. And it's, and it's an interesting dynamic because I don't know, really know anyone that has, you know, multiple personalities or, you know, things like that. But it was interesting to see how they all just kind of work in cohesiveness with each other. You know, every, but every personality has a specific purpose and they have a specific job. So it's very interesting to see how that kind of works. It's almost like he has an entire family living inside his mind. And all they are doing is they're trying to prepare things for when the beast finally arrives, which happens to be the 24th personality residing in him. And um, I like the I like the concept that, and this is where it kind of goes into the M. Night Shyamalami, M. Night Shyamalami type universe, where now we're getting into like, you know, supernatural or metaphysical and things like that. And the fact that you know, she talks about how there's been evidence and there's been studies about certain personalities that basically manifest a physical adaptation of that personality. Like I said before, the personality of Jade is a diabetic. So Jade has to take insulin. None of the other, none of the other, none of the other personalities within Kevin don't have that issue. So it was interesting that the body chemistry is able to change and morph to suit that personality. You know, it's almost a thing where it's like, you can have, and she, I mean, she even talked about how, like, she had one patient that, you know, had two personalities working at the same time, using both hands to write something. That's something that's never been explored before, as far as I know. It's never been explored before. So I thought that was a kind of, that was a very interesting, a very interesting addition to add to a story like this. Because then it makes you wonder, what if there are situations that exist where mo people who suffer from multiple personality disorder, you know, one personality, you know, feels the need to do this or to do that, 
you know, is very interesting. And that all really comes into play in terms of the personality which is known as the Beast. The Beast is essentially a personality that is that is that has superhuman strength, speed, is able to climb walls, is able to withstand high degrees of pain. Uh, the doc In one scene, the doctor was trying to stab him when he was constricting her, and then and the blade broke against his skin. Um, the lead lady, I mean the lead girl, who ends up surviving at the end, you know, she took a couple of shotgun shotgun blasts to him, and it didn't really slow him down. Uh, did they leave marks more than likely? But they didn't seem to slow him down. So, it just makes you wonder, what if, you know, given certain levels of stress. And this has always been talked about before, you know, how certain levels of stress, adrenaline kicks in and you're able to do superhuman things. What if there's certain levels of stress or anxiety or just the nat body's natural chemistry? What if it can alter and change to create something that's superhuman? That's, that's a very high possibility. It is a very high possibility. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. The acting, of course, was the acting. I enjoyed it a great deal. The majority of the movie took place, whether it was in the psychiatrist's office or, in, or beneath the zoo within the corridors where Kevin was holding the three girls. It was, um, it was, it was different. I, I can tell that M. Night Take a, took a great deal of time writing this because it's even with Unbreakable. I can tell he took a great deal of time putting that together also because it's just the dynamic of those two movies and it's like, it just makes you sit and wonder. You know, it's not like The Sixth Sense where it's like, you know, the, the big old twist at the end. In fact, I can go on and safely say there was, I mean, I mean, the big twist at the end would have to be that this takes place in the universe of Unbreakable. That has to be the big twist. But aside from that, it was just a very, it's very to me, it's very thought provoking to a degree. But it's a very entertaining movie. I would give Split a nine point nine point eight out of ten. A nine point eight out of ten. I'm just glad. That this is tied to the Unbreakable movie, because again, that was one of my Unbreakable is one of my favorite M. Light Shyamalan movies. It's one of my favorites, and for years I was hoping we would get some kind of sequel to it, but you know, up until now, it didn't seem like M. Night Shyamalan really did sequels like that. Um, so I'm very glad that this ties into it. I'm glad this is. I'm glad we got a cycle to Unbreakable, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, he, I believe he's working on Unbreakable 2 right now, so I very much look forward to that. I will say, um, when the Unbreakable music started, to, uh, the Unbreakable theme music started to kick in, I got all the goosebumps. I, I, I really did. All the way up until we saw David Dunn in that diner, and I, I I gotta add the 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 name that the news reports gave Kevin's character of the horde. That is the most super villainous name I can think of to give one person the horde, and that the scene where they're look they're observing where Kevin's observing his scars, and all these personalities are talking one behind the other. And it's like, damn, that's fucking genius writing. That, that's really good. And I'm pretty sure we've probably seen it before. But just the way it was done and James McAvoy's commitment to it was just spot on. It was really spot on. Um, in any case, that's my review for Split. If you guys have seen it, let me know in the comment section below what, what you thought about the movie. Whether you liked it, whether you disliked it. Whether you liked the tie-in to Unbreakable or if you didn't see it coming at all. If you enjoyed my review, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Share this video with all your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. I will most likely be spending the rest of the night listening to my Unbreakable soundtrack. Because that's how much I like that movie. Dreadlock Nerd out. Peace.